Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I'm going to be using the balloon arch, the dies, and the hot foil, and then the birthday wishes, also the dies, um, stamps, and then there's a hot foil birthday. We're going to be making a shaker card today. Um, I'm going to start by doing the hot foiling. Um, I opted to do my sentiment in black. That is typically what I prefer, but when I got my glimmer machine, um, I got like all these fun colors because who doesn't want the fun colors, right? Nobody wants the neutrals. It's the same thing like when you're buying eyeshadows. You, you don't ever want to buy the browns, even though you know that's what you're going to wear the most of because the other ones are way more fun. Um, so I had not purchased any black, but now I have remedied that and I am able to do the hot foil sentiments in black, which I very much love. Um, so then once I hot foiled that, then I am, I'm going to be honest, I struggled with this card quite a bit. I had an idea in my head of what I wanted to do. I know I'm not the only one this happens to. Um, and it just was too... I don't know, it was too something. It was too much. Um, and so what I ended up doing after a lot of trial and error was opting to use the prism. Um, I think that's what it's called. I'm pretty sure the prism foil is what I used, um, which is like, you know, super like how foil is like super reflective and rainbow and it's beautiful. Um, and so that is what I did my balloon arch in. You guys know when you watch my videos that I am a huge uh, proponent of getting more bang for your buck. And so once I did it, um, the traditional hot foiling, um, I then used my solid hot foil plate to use the other piece of the foil um, so that I could get all foiled balloons. <laughs> um, that's what this is going to give me. And then I'm going to use the die cuts to cut those out as well. Um so recently we've been talking about a little bit about um, like viewership and things like that and um, like why YouTube, look at, look at how pretty that, I got so distracted by the foils. Like look, just look at how pretty that is. It's so pretty. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, so now that those are done and the hot foiling is finished, I am going to go ahead and use my dies to cut these out. Something to note if you are doing the hot foiling, um, low tack tape can remove the foil partially or completely. So just make sure when you're taping down your dies that you're using the outside edge and you're not laying the sticky part of the tape over any part of your foil. For the one that is the solid foil piece, obviously I don't have a choice, but I am avoiding um, the images to the best of my ability. In addition to cutting out the regular um, images that are included with these dies, there are extra balloons that you can cut out. And so I'm going to use these extra dies to cut out more of the foil balloons um, so that I can use those as accent balloons on my one I'm going to color with Copic markers. Um, so yeah, those are just super fun. So if you wanted to do all foiled balloons, you could just you know, foil an entire sheet and then just die cut out in your individual balloons using these and build them up in whatever um, style or design that you were going for, um, which I think is kind of fun. Another thing just to know, I did use these in combination, but if you really love the arch, the balloon arch, and you're like, but I don't have a hot foil machine, I'm not interested in getting one, or maybe it's not something that's in your craft budget, um, you can just get the dies and it does leave an impression um, where all of the balloons are. So you could use this as a standalone die and still um, be able to get a really beautiful result. Back to um, the Copa coloring here. So one of the things in the discussions that we've had over on my channel is, um, like what type of videos or why viewership might be down. And somebody had mentioned, um, which I think is a very good point that maybe, um, hot foiling is not everybody's thing. And I get that. I totally do. Cause there've been plenty of things that have been out there that are like trendy that are not my thing. Um, and I have been making more cards lately with the hot foil machine. Now, it has been out for quite a bit, and I waited like a year until I bought mine. But I do think like Honeybee has more um, of the hot foil that's coming out, and so do some other companies. 
And one of the reasons why um, you've seen less traditional Kelly cards is because of the hot foil. I'm going to be honest. There, you know, I believe in, in being open with you guys. Um, and the reason that you haven't seen as much is is because of it. The hot foil. The paper that is used to get a really good result for hot foil is not conducive to dimensional Copic coloring. Here you can see with my balloons, I'm kind of outlining them in a darker color and then going in with a lighter color. Um, and it is, it does work. Like you can add color, but a great blend, not so much. You're, you're not going to get any realism Um at least that I have seen. I'm not saying that maybe you couldn't take a, an extra amount of time to see if you could get that sort of realism, but it's something that would take a little bit of work. For something like this, for these balloons, I don't really feel like I need it. I feel like adding some pretty colors with a, you know, a great design already with the, you know, the dyes and the hot foil plates um, that I don't need to add a ton of dimension, but it has been one of the reasons why I have shied away uh, from Copic coloring lately. Um, it's just, it's more of a slick paper. Uh, and so the ink doesn't have an opportunity to absorb in anywhere, which is where Copics really do their best blending or any alcohol markers for that matter. Um, it just kind of sits on top. And so you just need to be aware of what you're working with as you're, you know, putting your design together. The other reason why I haven't been doing as much Copic coloring is because it's time consuming. Um, I love it. It is a way for me to de-stress and make something that I really love and really enjoyed making. But with the addition of my little sweet pea, um, my little jelly bean, <laughs> um, like I just don't have as much time to craft as I normally do. And so because of that, just like with everything else in life, um, you know, things change based on the season that you're in. And the season that I'm in is I am a mom. Um, of a small child and there you obviously, you know, would hazard a guess whether you have kids or not that they always need more when they're little because they can do little, they can do less for themselves. Uh, you know, she basically can't do anything for herself. I shouldn't say that. She can find her pacifier pretty good now. Like she's pretty good at that. <laughs> um, so anyway, once that was done, I set that to the side and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiments again you don't need the hot foil machine to do this. The birthday that is in the stamp set is the same style size design that is the hot foiled one. So if you're like, hey, I really love that script, but again, hot foiling, not my jam, then the stamp set will provide you with basically the same thing just without the shimmer, or you could get the shimmer by heat embossing, um, like we've done for eons before, <laughs> before hot foiling was a thing. So I'm going to um, use the dyes. And can I just say that I love the way Honey Bee is doing their dyes now? Like, can we just talk about that? Like, they have printed on their dye sheets, like where the dye goes back. So you don't even have to guess about how to fit them in together. Um, and then they're already cut apart. Like, it's so fantastic. And is that like the world's biggest deal? No. But is it nice to have? Yes. Yes, it is. And I'm a big fan of that because I don't have to spend time trimming them apart. I don't have to spend time trying to figure out where they go back to. I just find its little outline, pop it back in, and I'm moving on to the next. So in building these cards, my sister's birthday has come and gone, but we haven't celebrated as a family yet due to other things that have transpired. So I needed a birthday card for my sister. If you guys have followed my videos, you know my sister's favorite color is the purple. Um, and I have this really beautiful, um, what is this called? It's Hero Arts paper that I ended up purchasing. This one what are you? Amethyst. That's what you are. And it's a beautiful bright purple color and I am a big fan of it. I also recently bought, I think, Lawn Fawns purple, which is also great. But anywho, um, and so I used this purple as a background for the balloons that are all hot foil, um, that are all that foil look. Um, so that way, because the foil is a lot, you know, it's a lot of shimmer, it's a lot of shine, it's a bunch of different colors when you look at it in the light. And I have to tell you, I can't see this when I'm actually making the card, but watching the video back, like it makes me love it even more because you can just see all those pretty colors. Um, 
But so I did the purple for my sister and then I really just kept it kind of simple. I popped them up on foam and then I'm going to pop my birthday up and my happy up on phone and I'm going to accent it with a couple of the Aurora Borealis um, rhinestones. And then I'm going to leave this one. I'm just going to let the balloons kind of shine for what they are. The colorful card is going to be the shaker. I don't want you to be like, she said shaker and there's no shaker. There is a shaker. Be patient. Um, so what were we talking about? Does anybody remember? I don't. The Copic coloring? I think that's what we were talking about. Um, yeah, no, completely has just left my mind. Don't you hate when that happens? My mom always says that she's like, oh, I'm, I'm getting to be like Graham. My mind's going. Um, but honestly, I think that we all do that most of the time. Like we all have situations where we forget what we were saying or talking about. Um, and we just chalk it up to like being busy or being um, multitasking or you know, whatever the situation may be, not until we get older do we start attributing it to being old. Um, but I think you're, we really all do it our whole lives. So on to the shaker. Um, here I'm just using some dry adhesive um, to like make a little circle around there to attach my acetate. And then I'm going to start, this took forever, guys. Not, not even going to pretend like it didn't because it was a round shape. Um, it took forever because in building a shaker card, you want to make sure that all of your edges of your foam tape touch each other. There can be no gapping because if you have any a gap, any a gap, if you have any gaps, <laughs> then your shaker bits and pieces and bobbles can escape. They can escape out the side and then uh, you don't have a pretty shaker card. You just kind of have a bunch of mess on your hands and you don't want that to have to be something your recipient deals with. So all of my little pieces are edge to edge, but because it's a round shape, I'm having to cut them individually um, to make this circle. There are, of course, um, you know, different like shaker pouches and things like that that are on the market that probably make this 10 times easier, but they're also more expensive. And I already have this big roll of foam tape and this is the life I live. So foam tape it is for this girl. Um, so I'm going to put those there. And then once these are in place, I am going to remove the sticky portion of the layer I already have down and then I'm going to put on another layer. I always do a minimum of two um, because you got to have enough room, like a big enough gap in between your layers of cardstock for your shaker bits to shake. Um, if they can't shake, they get stuck. Uh, if your gap isn't big enough and that is not fun for anybody, especially if you're giving an interactive card, you want them to be able to interact with it. I think that's the whole point. So once that's down, then I'm going to put the same level of foam tape all over the rest of the background. Um, so it's going to be two layers of foam tape every time I put foam tape down just so everything is level and even. Um, and this did take me, like I said, took me a hot minute to fill in all of the gaps, though not as long as it did to take to do the circle. Do I regret it? No, because the card is really cool and I love the bright colors and the shimmers. Um, so no regrets, but just know that it's going to take you a hot minute. For my filler, I use several different honeybee embellishments. I kept mine pretty neutral, but you could use whatever you want. Um, one thing of note for the dew drops that I used, I did end up taking out the bigger ones um, just because my gap between my for my foam tape was not big enough. And then the same thing with the, um, what is the name of these rhinestones? The rainbow, of course, they're rainbow. Kelly, stop it. The rainbow rhinestones. I also took out the biggest one of that and then just used the smaller parts. I did use a little bit of glitter. Um, this one is like a, I, I think it's called, wait, well, let me look. It's called mirror ball, glitter mirror ball. Um, so it is a bunch of different colors, but it does appear to be gray on the or silver and the video. Um, but when it's in the light, you can see that it's a bunch of different colors. 
I'm going to put that all in the middle um, where I want my shaker to be. And then I'm going to start um, the process of removing all of these background uh, stickers, these back backing stickers of my phone tape so that I can put my back piece on there. A tip that I like to use uh, when I'm putting my backer on is I actually lower myself down so that I am eye level with my desktop so that I can see and then I start with one corner make sure my edge across the top my short side is lined up and then um lay it down so that my long side is lined up if your top and your one side are squared up then the other side will automatically be squared up if something happens that it's not lined up you're not likely to be able to get it off i'm going to be honest with you but you can trim off the extra um with a pair of scissors it's not going to work with a uh a paper trimmer because it's just too thick but you can trim it off with scissors and still salvage your card so here, I'm not really sure why I was having such a hard time getting this piece fitted in, but you will notice throughout the process of putting this card together, it's really like I've never put a card together before. And my guess is because I'm using liquid adhesive on a, a slick surface, um, whether it be the acetate that is the window of my card or the paper that I used to do my foiling on, like all of it is a little bit slick. And so I'm not giving my pieces, I think, I think this is what's happening. I really don't know for sure. Um, but I think I'm not giving them enough time to dry before I'm touching them again. So uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, these are the little balloons that we cut out out of the foil that I'm using as accent pieces um, just to kind of tie everything together. Um, and I really like the way this card turned out. I was really happy with it. So back to the crafting. Um, so yeah, there's just um, talking to my husband today. Um, he and I talked about like what it is that because I just don't feel like I ever have enough time. Like, this is now my job. That's what I've signed up for. Oh, and somebody else had mentioned that maybe I was on more design team now, but I'm actually not. I'm still just on um, just Honeybee, and I've been with them for years, and I love Lisa and Melissa, and I have no plans on going anywhere um, because I love their products and I love them as people. Um, but yeah, I'm not on any more design teams. I think maybe I'm picking up more guest design work and maybe that might be what you're seeing. But I used to do that all the time when I had time for it. And then, you know, when Eric and I started dating, I got di divorced. Eric and I started dating in that order. Um, then, uh, you know, and I had Peanut and I was working for jobs. And so some of those things I had to give up because I just didn't have time for it. And so I think now maybe the problem is, is that I'm a little bit overwhelmed with all of the things. And of course, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm scared and I am nervous because I have never had card making or anything outside of a regular 40 hour work week, full time job be my source of income. And so I think there's a little bit of panic going on in my head because I'm always constantly trying to figure out what it is that I need to be doing. Um, so yeah, so that's both cards. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you were inspired to give one of these a try. And maybe it's been a minute since you made a shaker. Um, go back to them. They're fun. So I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.